like 40. So we got a lot of questions on what we feed them, how often we feed them, and how long it takes us. So this is a spontaneous video that I decided to do today because we're both off. Um, so I'm just using what we have left over. We're actually due for a grocery trip pretty soon, but this is what we have left over. And I'm gonna quickly walk you guys through um, what we feed our animals. Now, a lot of our animals don't have to eat every day, like the turtles and tortoises, they eat every other day. The snakes only eat once a week, but the birds and the pigs, uh, they eat every day. But we're also gonna feed the turtles today. So, let's get started. Look at all of this. So, the first thing that I'm gonna do, we're gonna make food for the parrots. So, we have two big parrots, one little parrot, and then we have Zazu, our hornbill. So, I'm gonna walk you through the parrot diet first, and then we're gonna move on to Zazu because he has a very special diet. So my birds don't eat seeds. I took them off of seeds probably a year and a half ago. I make all their food now. Um, so today what we're gonna do, we're gonna add some pepper, some orange pepper. I have some sugar peas. I already chopped up some uh, Brussels sprouts. And then as a treat, they get fruit once in a while. So we have some apple. So let me get the bowls. I deep cleaned the bowls a couple of days ago, so it's so pretty clean. So this is Sweet Pea, this is Lucky, and this is Elmo. So we're just gonna mix that together. Check that out. And there's a bunch of very helpful guides and like groups on Facebook and other groups, avian like raw diets. Um, so I'm definitely not an expert, but I've learned so much by joining these groups. So you don't even really have to feed them this much. Um, I do because my birds are picky and they throw everything on the ground. So I always make sure they have more than enough. I've also been soaking some quinoa. Um, it looks like it's sprouting a little bit. Uh, it's better to leave this for five to eight hours, but in a pinch you can do it for one hour. You can also boil it, which I do sometimes. So this is just some soaked quinoa uh, that I'm gonna add on top like that. And they really like that. Let me rinse my hands. <laughs> And then I buy um, the pellets from Tops Parrot Food. This is like the best of the best. It's organic, uh, no GMOs, no artificial flavors. Um, and yeah, it, it's good for all birds. They have different sizes for different size birds. So I just give them about a handful of this, these pellets. And then I also have this, this is called all-in-one seed mix. It's also from Topps Parrot Food. And you can soak this or feed it dry. So I usually just do like a little handful like that. Smell it nice. And you can obviously add whatever you want. There's a whole list on online on Google of like the safe foods to feed them, fruits, veggies, things like that. Um, maybe we'll add some blueberries too. Everyone can get a few blueberries. I don't like to give them too much fruit. Oh, and then we have chopped walnuts that I almost forgot about. And you can also soak nuts. People um, say that when you soak them for a few hours, it's easier to digest for the birds. So then we're not gonna soak them. Perfect, and then for Elmo, um, Elmo is our severe plucker, so he gets this CBD oil, which we think really helps him. It's CBD honey, or CBD infused honey. So he just gets a little bit like this. And that is it for the parrots. So super simple, super healthy, and we'll put that over there. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to Zazu. Zazu is the Vonderdecken's hornbill. This is his bull. Now, Zazu um, he is a low iron bird. Soft bills like toucans, arsaris, hornbills, um, they are low iron, they're iron sensitive. So there's only like 10 or 11 different fruits that I feel comfortable feeding him. Um, I'll actually add the guide for you guys. Um, it's by Dr. Jason Crean. He just he um, did this whole big research thing and, and 
uh, listed all the fruits that are low iron and that are safe in moderation or every day. So today what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna give him some apple, blueberries, worms, his low iron pills, maybe a little carrot, I haven't decided yet, and then um, a plum, which is safe. Oh, I also forgot for the carrots, I have this avian tea. This is the pretty plume. I'm gonna sprinkle some of the leaves. This is from Greywood Manor. You can actually steep this and make tea or you can just sprinkle it on top like that. And they also make an iron out tea, uh, which you can give the two cans, the RSRs and the hornbills. Zazu's not a huge fan, um, but I do try to at least sometimes sprinkle the, the iron out leaves in his food. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Missouri low iron pellets. So you can get some of that. And you can soak these, he eats them dry. Um, you can soak them with uh, spring water, spring water only for low iron birds, remember. And then we're gonna do some of the plum. I try to cut it into like small pieces only because he squeezes everything and tosses the juice everywhere and makes a mess of the house. So the smaller it is, the less he has to squeeze it and make a giant mess. So we're gonna put that there. Apple, we're gonna give him some apple. Um, also to clean all of these vegetables, I use warm water and apple cider vinegar. That's safe to you know clean everything and wash. So we'll do some apple. Full of blueberries and then um, hornbills well this species anyway is an omnivorous bird so protein is very important for him so we'll do something like that um, let me see if I actually have any iron out tea left this is where I keep it I think I do yes I do that's the iron out tea from Greenwood Manor We'll sprinkle some of that. Perfect. Uh, and maybe we'll do a little bit of carrot too. Now the hardest part about owning a hornbill, there's really not like a whole lot on their care. So um, I did a lot of research. Like I said, I'm part of a lot of groups. I like to hear different opinions from different people. Um, so we've come a long way in the last 20, 30 years owning the toucans and the hornbills, but still not everything is known and new research is coming out every day. Um, papaya used to be like a staple for them and everyone said feed papaya. Uh, and now there's new research that papaya actually can cause liver storage um, disease or iron storage disease in the liver. So we feed papaya in moderation. Um, I actually have some in the fridge, but he doesn't even really like papaya. <laughs> so we'll add some carrot. And Zazu's done. That's it for him. So we'll put it to the side with the rest. Isn't that so pretty? Look at all that. It's beautiful. All right, I guess we can do the tortoises and the box turtle next, or the box turtles, we have two. So we'll put this here. I'll get some kale. Oh, we might be able to add some cactus too. I know we have some cactus. So this is starting to turn just a little bit mushy, not too bad, it's still totally fine to feed. This will probably last us another like two days or so. So dark leafy greens, um, we rescued, or not rescued, but we adopted that uh, eight year old box turtle a couple weeks ago. And like I mentioned, um, the previous owner was basically only feeding it cat food and bananas. So I'm trying to offer more variety. So we are gonna do some banana for them as well as some kale, I'll put that like that. Everything in moderation. Um, I really try not to feed too much fruit. Let's do some carrot. And then what we don't have here, what we're gonna add though, is the um, Missouri tortoise child, and we'll add that for the redfoots and also for the box turtles. So 
I think that's going to be it for them. Um, we're gonna, also going to add some live worms, um, but we'll do that at the end so they don't crawl out. And then we're going to do the same for these guys. Maybe we'll give Zazu a little slice of banana too. We'll give him a little bit here. He can have, he can have half. And usually when I prep for the parrots, I make a big thing of um, chopped and the, the raw food mash that lasts me like four or five days. So I don't do this every morning. When Chris helps me in the morning feed, it takes us what, 20 minutes maybe to feed everybody with uh, the food and the water and everything. So we have a certain routine, but I just want to show you guys so it's going to take a little bit longer. Look at that. All right. Um, let's give them some apple. And then I would like to add some cactus for both of them and the chow. So we're gonna go grab that and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we added some of the Missouri uh, tortoise chow and you can feed this either soaked or dry. I know that a lot of people prefer soaking them. Um, I didn't even know that you could feed it dry until our good friend Jason who has Galapagos tortoises started feeding his galops dry. And instead of just making a mess when it's mushy, they actually individually pick up every single one. So it's almost like enrichment for them, which is really cool. So we got some cactus. This is, I think, prickly pear cactus. What is this? It's not prickly pear. Are you sure? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, we grow it in the backyard and it has little fruits. I, I'm not a cactus expert. I'm gonna get so many splinters from this, but we'll cut some up. The tortoises really like it. I'm also gonna give the box turtle some. What is this called, nopales? Chris is dying for me to make him cactus. I have no idea how to prepare this. <laughs> the tortoises make it look so good though when they eat it. All right, so we'll just add some like that. And then that's it for them. So now we got the box turtles, the tortoises, the parrots and Zazu. Um, and now we have to do the pig. So my pig is very spoiled. First, we're gonna start with a cup of Missouri pig chow or pig pellets, I don't know what it's called. So most people just feed that or they feed too much of it. I like to give her a variety. She's on a very strict diet. Pigs are very prone to obesity. So we'll give her a couple carrots. I wish she would eat kale, but she really does not like kale. We'll give her some blueberries. We'll give her some apple and then maybe pepper. Um, I'll also soak quinoa, or not soak quinoa, I'll boil quinoa for her. She loves quinoa. So when I give it to the parrots, I will also give it um, to the pig. And you can soak this in warm water. I'll add a little bit of water to make them feel fuller. And we'll do some of this. Do you wanna make a bowl for the tiger? Uh, so actually what I was thinking is we can run to the supermarket really quick after we feed, because we can feed them later because I want to get chicken, either chicken hearts or gizzards, but we can definitely make something for the tegu. Um, the tegu and the monitor are going to eat today, and we'll try to show you guys them eating. The monitor probably won't eat. Uh, he only eats when we leave, but the tegu definitely will eat, and he eats like a savage. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll make him a, a separate plate, and then we'll add the, the chicken hearts or the, the gizzards in it. And then we'll add, I guess, a little bit of that. So that is it, and now it's time to go feed. We're going to go feed out. Okay, so Chris is going to feed Zazu, who he already unleashed. <laughs> Force of chaos. I think he's looking for his bones. <laughs> he always goes for the worms first. Thank you. 
And now for the other animals. Elmo. Mm -hmm. What you think, huh? Is that good stuff? Is that good stuff? Is he chewing on the, the flower from the tea? No. Or he's a walnut. Lucky screams when he doesn't get attention or if he's in his cage, so I'm just gonna hand feed him. <laughs> you want some of that? Is that not good enough? Yeah, that's what I got. Oh, you found an apple? So yummy. Now, when we adopted Lucky two years ago, his whole diet was pretty much sunflower seeds and his green feathers were actually black i'll show you guys like before and after photos so with a proper diet like this and offering raw foods and vegetables he loves the orange pepper um in two years he, he's gone from a black bird to like a bright green vibrant healthy bird it's amazing what a proper diet can do <laughs> basil the box turtle he'll definitely come out and eat for us you want to show him He'll definitely eat the worms once he sees them. Sage is still really shy. Let's see if I can find her. There she is. So she's still pretty shy. So Gordo the Tegu is out right now and he is fiery. Yeah, look at him. That's what he does. Um, Chris actually just applied for the permit, so hopefully we'll be hearing back soon. Because um, like we said in our previous video, they just made it illegal to own these guys. Uh, we're gonna feed him and the monitor a little bit later. We're gonna go buy chicken hearts. Okay, she's being very impatient. So we have to feed the tortoises and the pig here simultaneously or else she steals all their food. Sometimes if she's being really pushy, we have to take them to the backyard and feed them separately. <laughs> Look how happy the tortoises are. And the chickens. <laughs> And we were just about to go look for the Herman's tortoise, but it looks like he found us first. <laughs> He's rushing over. Hurry up, buddy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So we just got home from the grocery store. We got some chicken hearts. And so we'll feed these to the snapping turtle, the take you monitor. So we have one to the turtle right now. I think he's scared of it. <laughs> yeah, he's confused. <laughs> what a top predator. He's so cute. Now, the tegu, when I used to have him inside, was tame. Now that he's outside, he's like a wild animal, <laughs> okay? And if I catch him, then he tames down again, then he's fine, you can hold him in your lap, he won't try to bite you. But when he's in here, he is nuts, okay? Especially about food, so. I can help you, just be careful. Yeah. He's probably in this black tub. Oh, oh. he's behind the water dish, I see his tail. Oh, I see the tail, yeah. yeah. You guys can see his right there. <laughs> there you go, gentle. That's for oh, you. That's a good oh, boy. there you go. That's a good tegu. You're gentle, you psycho. <laughs> there you want another one? There you go. There, see? We're giving it to you. You don't have to attack anybody. <laughs> you want another one? Oh, a little bit more savage. <laughs> He is a sketchable. <laughs> he is so sketchy. Oh, another one? This is the last one you're gonna get. There you go. Well, that went pretty smooth. Yeah. So. What we can do for the monitor is we'll put some out. He's very afraid of us. Uh, so I'll put some out on the rock and then get him out from under his little hiding spot and then he can go and find it on his own. So we'll just leave that there and he'll get it whenever he feels like it. Okay, so that was all the animals that needed to be fed today. Um, we have a lot more animals. A lot of them are like snakes and other animals that don't have to eat every day, like they have Yuma. So to see all of our animals, check out the video we posted last week where we introduced you to every single one of them. Um, but yeah, it went well, you know. Let us know what you guys thought. Maybe we'll do a snake feeding video next time. If you guys wanna learn more about their diets or anything like that, feel free to leave comments below, ask questions. And thank you guys for watching. Thanks.